We all hear the unemployment rate quoted all the time, and it's obviously a very important economic indicator. But what I want to do in this video is dig a little bit deeper and actually figure out how it's calculated. So what I'm going to start with is I'm just going to draw a big diagram right here. So let's say that that big circle represents the entire U.S. population. So that's the U.S. population. And I just looked it up on Google. It's 304 million people, give or take a couple. And then there's going to be a subset of that's everybody. That includes my 10-month-old son. So obviously, if we're talking about unemployment, he, he at least shouldn't be relevant, not, not just yet. So there's a subset of people that the Bureau of Labor Statistics considers at least kind of old enough to care about. So this is 16 years and older. 16 years and older. And that, I looked that up as of November. That was about 237 million people in the US. But then there's a subset of that, because you know not everyone 16 years and older is necessarily employable or wants to work. They might be in school or in the military, or they might be retired. So they look for a subset of the people old enough to work, and they call that the labor force. I'll do the labor force in pink. So that right there, oh, I've already used that color. Let me do it in. I'll do it in green. So that right there in green is the labor force. Labor force. And as of November, if, if those numbers I just saw were right, are 154 million people. And then there's some subset of the labor force uh, that the Bureau of Labor Statistics considers unemployed. Unemployed. I'll do it in orange. Unemployed. And the latest numbers are about 15 million. 15 million unemployed. That's unemployed. Unemployed. So uh, just kind of the very simple way that they actually calculate the numbers, but we'll see there's a little bit more nuance than what the formula might speak to at first, is that the unemployment rate, do it in this color, the unemployment rate, unemployment rate is equal to the number of unemployed, I'll do it in that same orange color, so unemployed, unemployed divided by the labor force, divided by the labor force. And the labor force is made up of the unemployed, unemployed, plus the, uh, as, as you would imagine, the employed, plus the employed right there. So in this example, to figure out the unemployment rate, the un there are 15 million who are unemployed, so they'd put a 15 million up there in the numerator. And then the denominator would be this entire labor force. So it would be the 15 million who are unemployed, and then the whatever 154 minus 15 is. What is that? It's, uh, it's 139 million, 139 million who are, who are gainfully employed. So it would be the 139, that's so this number right here is 139. This number right here is 15. You add them together, you get the labor force. That's 154 million people. Now, that seems straightforward enough. I think if you do the math here, you get something that's close to 10%. But what I want to focus on is the definitions of unemployed and the labor force. Because they're a little different, at least from my point of view, than uh, how the term is used. So according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, unemployed is someone who essentially doesn't have a job but wants one. And the way they measure whether you want to have a job is you've looked for a job, looked for job in the past four weeks. So if I was trying to find a job and you know I've, I'm sending my resume around and then I just got you know fatigue from interviewing and I took five weeks off, I would not be considered unemployed. And that's an important thing to think about. If the economy were to be so bad, so let's say I do, you know, in week one, I am part of the unemployed. I'm, I don't have a job, but I am looking for a job. So I'm, I'm sitting right there. I, and I am part of the labor force. Uh, I'm not employed, but I'm unemployed looking for a job. But let's say, you know, after several weeks of this, I just get tired. I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to take a few months off. Or I don't think, I'm not even going to look for a job. Things are so bad until things get better. What happens is, is that I go and, go and join a pool of people outside of the labor force. 
So instead of being part of the labor force or part of this employed group right here, if I take more than a four week, uh, if I if if I take essentially yeah four four and a half weeks uh, where, where I don't look for a job, I go into a new bucket called marginally attached workers. Marginally attached workers, right there, and that's part of the people who aren't in the labor force. So all of a sudden, I'm not in the labor force. So just like that, you're taking me out of the numerator, and you're also taking me out of the denominator. So that actually could improve, that actually could improve the unemployment rate. And I want to make this very clear, because this is a non-intuitive idea that the economy could so be so bad that because I jump out of the labor pool, the unemployment rate could actually improve. And let me, let me do this with very simple numbers just to make it a little bit clear. Let's imagine a world, let's imagine a world where the entire potential working, I guess we call them adult population, let's say the adult population has three people in it. So there's three adults. So people old enough, three adults, people old enough to work. And let's say the subset of that adult population that we right now consider part of the labor force, let's say there's two people. Obviously these are extreme numbers. But I think it'll make you, it'll show you how the math can work out. And let's say out of those two people in the labor force, one of them is unemployed. So one of them is unemployed. So one unemployed. So in this simple example, obviously if, if there's two people in the labor force, one is unemployed, then the other person is employed. And then there's an, uh, one more adult out there who's you know, maybe in school or is a homemaker or maybe a retiree, but you know, we don't know exactly what they are. And let's say I'm this unemployed person right here. I'm this unemployed person. I'm that unemployed person right there. And let's say I keep looking for a job, but at some point I've gotten rejected so much and the, the news I hear is so dire that I just decided to take a break or uh, uh, take some rest or I just become uh, depressed about my, my lot in life and I just stop looking for a job. I become discouraged. What happens, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, is I am no longer part, so this is before, this is while I'm trying. This is while I'm trying. But if I give up, essentially, if I become so discouraged that I stop looking for work for more than four weeks, then the new way that we would have to draw the di diagram out our, our little three-person country is we would still have the three adults. We would still have the three adults. But now, instead of being unemployed since I've given up, I'm now not part of the, I'm not part of the labor force because I'm not looking for work. So now... The entire labor force is just going to be that one dude with the job. So one person. And there'll be no unemployment. Because there's no one in, in the labor force who doesn't have a job. I would have jumped into this bucket right here. I would now be out here. This is me, and you know I'm, I'm now, well, I, I meant to draw that as a set, but I, I turned it into a frowny face. But this is me right here. So what actually happened, over here I had a 50% unemployment rate, 1 divided by 2. 1 divided by the entire labor force, that's 50% unemployment, which is obviously another extreme number. But now in this situation, because I've dropped out of the labor force, because I was so discouraged, I am now, uh, I now don't get counted. And so here you have 0% unemployment. And if you just superficially looked at the numbers, and there are other scenarios you can think about where either the numerator or denominator changes because people get encouraged or discouraged or uh, decide to be a homemaker or go back to school or come out of the military or whatever it might be, I just want to show you that something very non-intuitive happened. Because the economy was so bad, I jumped out of the labor force. And because I jumped out of the labor force, the unemployment rate looks superficially positive. It went from 50% in this example to 0%. Now obviously in the real world you're not going to see this type of extreme behavior because uh, you have more than three people. You have 304 million people. But what I wanted to do is show you the nuance of, of, of how this is calculated. And I don't think anyone is trying to mislead anyone. But, the, it, it, it's, but what is happening is that they have to draw some threshold on what it means to be part of the labor force. And that's why this notion of looking for a job in the past four weeks. So, I mean, if there is, you know, if, you're, if your brother-in-law who's living in your basement, uh, you might consider him to be unemployed, but the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics considers him uh, to be, if he hasn't looked for a job in the last four weeks, uh, discouraged or, or perhaps marginally attached.